Ja Morant. 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 And ja Morant is just at a point in his in his life where he has to make a decision. Do I, am I going to be holding myself accountable? I just hope that he grows up. I'm very disappointed. He saw the camera in his face. He made the choice. There should be. There should be consequences. You are the face of the league. Is this a precursor? Have, have you learned some lesson from this? Millions, if not tens of millions of kids globally would see him as having done something that was celebrating in a way. Disgusted, um, wondering what the hell is wrong with him. This is a man that is universally recognized in NBA circles as being a highly, highly intelligent individual. And you're throwing all of this in jeopardy for what? When taking a look around the NBA at the most dysfunctional organizations the league has to offer, often teams like the Detroit Pistons or the Wizards will come to mind. Teams that are not only very young and loaded with immature players, but also just bad. So when you look at the Memphis Grizzlies, a young team that's recently only seemed to be in the news for bad reasons, and are currently tied for the second worst record in the Western Conference, why do they get a pass? Why is Memphis not considered a dysfunctional team? Well, they have one player to thank for that, and that is John Morant. John Morant has, yes, single-handedly given the Grizzlies the leadership they've needed to finish with the number two seed in the Western Conference for two years straight. Can you believe that? Memphis is now the second worst team in their conference, and the reason is more clear than ever. John Morant has yet to step on the court, and who would have thought the player that's led the team by a landslide in points, assists, every important advanced stat is actually important to the success of his team. And that might sound like a no-brainer to most fans, but if you've seen the way that people have been talking about John ja Morant for quite some time now, you get the impression that he's some sort of an empty stat star who Memphis can survive without. I mean, Memphis has gone 31-15, and 15, a record good enough for the number two seed this year in the West in the games that Morant didn't play from 2021 to 2023. This fact is, of course, a very big reason as to why so many basketball fans and people in the media view John Morant as not quite the superstar the numbers basically prove he is. However, this season, with no John Morant on the team, the Memphis Grizzlies are starting to realize just how much they need Ja to continue building upon the success they found with this very young team. And without Ja, none of it happens. We know this because not only does Memphis suck right now without him, but everybody else is still fully intact and healthy, for the most part. Jaron Jackson Jr., last year's deep boy hasn't missed a game. Desmond Bain, Jaws' number one sidekick on offense in Memphis, he hasn't missed a game either. You go down the roster, you see the group has been relatively healthy this season. And unless you think Steven Adams being out for the year is the reason why the team is sucking, you will realize the Memphis Grizzlies are nothing without Ja Moran. The impact that Ja has had on Memphis really can't be expressed entirely. Right now, the team is losing, like a lot, and his teammates are for the most part putting up eye-poppingly worse numbers this year without Ja. But let's start with the team as a whole. How does Memphis look this year without their superstar point guard at the helm? Well, they're losing a lot more and putting up almost 10 fewer points per game, but you probably could have guessed that. However, more shockingly, this year Memphis is second to last in field goal percentage as a team and dead last in three-point percentage. Massive drop-offs from last season with Ja. Can you imagine Ja's presence alone had that big of an impact on his team's three-point shooting even with Ja himself being a below average three-point shooter? Ja's presence makes his team better and if you're at all aware of what the difference is between an empty stat star and a true superstar, it's the impact the player has on the guys around it. Even with Desmond Bain, the only guy on the team that can create a his own shot. Even his numbers have dipped quite a bit due to him not having shots set up by John Moran on a nightly basis. And for the players that can't create for themselves, they're seeing it worse than anybody else's right now. Those guys, the supporting cast, rely heavily on John Moran to set them up not just because he's proven to be an elite passer, but his presence as one of the NBA's most lethal scorers takes basically all of the attention off of the other guys and onto him. We thought Triple J finally figured 
figured out his efficiency problems last season. No, John Morant figured them out for him. Almost every role player in Memphis sees a significant boost in production when they're playing with John. And that is what a superstar does. Jaron Jackson Jr. since 2021 has a field goal percentage of 45% and a three point percentage of 32% without John Morant on the floor. Without John Morant, Triple J's reputation offensively would be a whole lot worse. And that's what a superstar does for the guys around him. But all of this begs us the question, why wasn't this common knowledge prior to this season? Where it's abundantly obvious that the Grizzlies cannot hang without Ja. Well, an underrated explanation here is something that anybody who's ever played any sort of a team sport could tell you. You can survive a few games here and there without the heart and soul of your team if it's only for a few games, but there's a limit to how much you can do without them playing. John Moran, whether the media told you to believe it or not, is absolutely the heart of the Memphis Grizzlies. Every go around in the NBA Summer League, John Moran flies out to Vegas or wherever else it's happening to support his young potential teammates from the sidelines almost without exception. Something very few other NBA stars do. He's also been spotted at countless Memphis hustle games where he's seen supporting G-leaguers, many of which will never even make the Grizzlies roster. He's always speaking well about his teammates, propping them up at any chance he gets, and more fascinatingly, his teammates all absolutely love him. Sure, John Morant gets himself into trouble too often, but it's never with his own teammates. There's never any drama within his team either from the players or the front office when Ja is involved, which tells us that that Ja is an outstanding leader even if he does some silly things outside of his professional life. And his teammates couldn't agree anymore. He is in the locker room, you know, his engagement, his engagement as a leader, um, cause we don't, a lot of us don't really know Ja. He has that switch that he can flip where he gets so competitive and he, he knows when to turn it on for the game. He gets us all in that mode where we're like, all right, let's go. Let's go out there and be dogs. Let's have that unwavering confidence no matter what. It don't matter what anybody throws at you. When you have that in your point guard and your leader, it's easy to follow and get behind something like that. You, mm -hmm. you know where his heart is. You know that how badly he wants this on-court coach. He knows where he's telling me all this. Thing. And so why is all of this important? Well, it explains to us why the Grizzlies need John Morant so badly. Previously, when Morant hasn't gotten to play, he's at least on the sidelines supporting his team, who all know he's going to be back very soon. During his current suspension, however, we're talking 25 games straight of no Morant, and what really makes it a lot more harmful is that Ja is not allowed to be in the arena while his team is playing. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that Memphis looks totally depleted this year and completely drained of the spark they need to win more basketball games. With John Moran's presence, both on and off the floor, that's the last of their concerns. So it's really Memphis who could have at least done their part to keep the team afloat without Ja and ensure there's enough depth on the roster. Instead, they let go of one of the best backup point guards the NBA has to offer last summer in Tyus Jones in a trade that landed them Marcus Smart. On top of that, Memphis signed 35-year-old Derrick Rose to a two-year contract. Now, these moves seem pretty okay. And the vision is clear, sign two veteran guards that can help mentor the naive Ja Morant. But remember, on the court, Ja has had little to no problems being a young point guard in the NBA. So the on-court value of trading away one of the best playmaking backup point guards in the league in Tyus Jones for a non-playmaking Marcus Smart didn't make a lot of sense. And the further you look into some of the more recent moves Memphis has made, you start to wonder how much we should really be blaming Ja for what's happening instead of the team itself. Remember when Memphis threw Dylan Brooks under the bus after they lost in the first round of last year's playoffs? Well, Brooks has continued to play his role for his new team in Houston in a very productive way, showing why he was always a winning player. You want to talk about immaturity? There you go. It's the Memphis front office leaking a report to the NBA media that they're not re-signing Dylan Brooks right after they lose in the playoffs. What a joke. And it's not been entirely bad. Sure, Memphis has made some questionable roster moves as of late and some iffy picks in the draft, but they've also made quite a few decent decisions, including drafting 
drafting players like Ja, Jaron Jackson, and especially Desmond Bain in the late first round. For a small market team, they've done okay making the most of their picks and signing low-key free agents even if they miss here and there. But when it comes to basketball, and basketball only, Ja Moran has been a consistent positive as the leader of this team in every facet of what it means to be a leader. Want to look at the playoffs? Well, Ja has been a consistent riser come playoff time every go around. Okay, well, how does his team play without him? Well, we've already covered that, and you know the answer. They're terrible. He supports his teammates at any chance he gets, and the entire roster absolutely supports him back. And so, I don't know about you guys, but personally, I think Ja Morant has been an incredible mature young leader for the Memphis Grizzlies. The impact he brings his team on the basketball end just goes without saying, given how they look without him this year. And much of that has to do with the kind of leader he is when he is not on the court. The love he has for Memphis, his teammates there, Nobody has ever had anything bad to say about him on a personal level. Does that mean he's clear of doing anything bad in his life, or that I condone every decision he's made? No, but for such a young player that was drafted to a team that everybody believed was still years away from doing anything to know in the NBA, and to turn that situation around basically immediately and speed up the timeline probably like 5 years is not something most top draft picks are capable of, and certainly not a player who is not a leader. So let me know your thoughts on John Morant, was I on the mark here, or am I missing an important perspective of this craze that's surrounding John Morant? Thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoyed, and okay. Catch you all in the next one.